So, right, let's let's then begin with a bit of a dismantling process in terms of the way that culture at large believes that reality or, yeah, how, what reality is, how people believe what is going on and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that brings us obviously to materialism or physicalism. Uh, and also our intuitions about reality. So for me right now, if I feel like there is a world out there, I can see out the window, uh, there are cars, there are houses, there are pavement, the, um, there's sky, it's cloudy. I, in the form of a body, would walk out of the door. Inside that body, uh, there is a mind <laughs> and uh, a self that is deciding to walk down the road and perhaps get in a car or go to the shop or whatever. And if I ran into a wall, it would hurt, etc. So it's a world of things. And I am a thing within that that just happens to have a mind within it. Is that, that seems to me to be the sort of the everyday understanding of reality. Is, is that about right? Would you say? That's the average everyday understanding. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, yes. it's wrong. It's certainly wrong. Yeah. Uh, could you just explain, Bernardo, actually, just to start, how our intuitions then mislead us? We, nature has provided us with a set of sense organs, sensors, uh, eyes, ears, nose. Um, and the result of this sensing of the world is presented to us as what we call perception. But if you think of it, perception is like just a dashboard of instruments. It's like you're a pilot in an airplane, and instead of having a transparent uh, windshield, uh, there is only aluminum, and all you can see, uh, aluminum, and all you can see uh, is the dashboard of instruments in, in front of you, which provide us with sense data. There are sensors outside the, the airplane providing you with sense data, accurate information about the world. But of course, the dashboard doesn't look like the world. It provides relevant and accurate uh, sense data about the world, but it doesn't look like the world as it is in itself. The problem is we are born inside that cockpit. We have never peeked out a transparent window to see the world as it actually is. All we have is the dashboard. So we talk in terms of the language of the dashboard. We don't talk about um, the storm outside. We talk in terms of wind speed. Uh, direction of movement, you know, uh, uh, air pressure, which is what the dashboards of instruments provide us. And we end up concluding that the world is the dashboard because that's all we ever had. Our language evolved around that, our thinking evolved around that. Uh, but of course, although the dashboard is useful, you can fly by instrument and we need the, 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 the sensors and the, and the and the dials and the dashboard to navigate life and, and survive, uh, obviously the world as it is in itself is not a dashboard. It doesn't look like a dashboard. Um, and that's where uh, things go wrong because we are cooped up in that cockpit. We think in terms of the dials and we forget that the real world is that which is being sensed, that which is being measured and not the needles inside the dials inside your dashboard of instruments. Rupert, Bernardo mentioned our perceptions. So when I go outside and I see cars, houses, people, etc., uh, actually, what I'm seeing is um, seeing the perception of seeing, the perception of hearing, perception of feeling, etc. So can you just talk a little bit about that? About how that is what we're seeing, whilst but superimposed on top of that is the idea of things. Yes, there is experience. We're having an experience, or we are experiencing. And the, the, we extrapolate from this fact a, a, a model which, as you rightly described in your introduction to this question, the, the, the model of a, of a mind or a self inside the body looking out through our sense perceptions of what we consider to be, uh, we consider our sense perceptions to be a, a transparent windscreen through which we look and get an accurate picture of reality. Whereas as Bernardo has just 
explained. No, our, our, our sense perceptions are, are limited. They they filter reality and they, they, they make reality appear in a way that is consistent with their own limitations, just like one who wears orange tinted glasses sees orange snow. And well, if you wear orange tinted glasses when you're skiing in the mountains for long enough, you forget you've got the glasses on. And you think that the way you're seeing the snow is the way it really, and then at the end of the day, you take your glasses off and you think, oh, I had forgotten that I was receiving, I, I was viewing a, a filtered picture of, of, of the reality. The glasses are so close to me that I had forgotten them. And that I thought that I was just looking through the clear w w windscreen of, of, of of my eyes so um and, and this is this is um because our sense perceptions as, as bernard said that they're so close to us we, we've forgotten that we are so to speak wearing them like glasses or like a vr headset and we we, we presume that the the model of reality that that, that they present to us is how reality actually is. No, it's just how reality appears when it's filtered through the limitations of a human mind. You mentioned the senses, and obviously, so we've got seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling. So these five sensory organs. So we have five ways of experiencing, should we say, and then we also have the equivalent number of, of organs to help us in that. Is the the coincidental nature of that in anything worth commenting yes, on? Absolutely, you know, you, you're right. As human beings, we 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 experience seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling, and we experience the world in the form of sights, sounds, tastes, textures, and smells. But is that a coincidence? Of course not. <laughs> There's a direct correlation. Let, 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 let's say we had a. a a, a sixth, well, we have a sixth um, sense that thinking, but let's say there was, a, there was a, a, let's just talk about perception. Let's say there was a, a sixth way of per perceiving, seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling, and let's call it Xing. Let's say there was some experience called Xing. We would experience Xs out there. Yeah. Or if there was something called Ying, we would experience Ys out there. So and yes, we would th say, th that's is... how the world is. <laughs> what? And then we would say, that's how and, the world um, really is. That's the that, why out yes. there. <laughs> in, in other words, the world is not what we see. It is the way we see. Yes. It, it, it's reality. I, I'm not, and, and Bernardo and I both, um, we both make this point over and over again to prevent this understanding from sliding into um, solipsism. And, I'm not saying, I know Bernardo is not saying that all there is to reality is our individual experience of it. Reality precedes the finite mind or its observation. But the finite mind um, filters reality and makes it appear to us in a way that is consistent with uh, the limitations of our sense faculties. It's what William Wordsworth beautifully said when he said, um, we both we half create and half perceive the world. We perceive it in the sense that what we're looking at is what's real. It's the the reality that precedes the human mind, the, the mind. But we create it in the sense that we lend it its appearance. And this beautiful understanding that the world as we experience it is is um it's an interaction between reality and the finite mind. It, it, the world borrows its reality from something that is way bigger than the finite mind, but it borrows its appearance from the finite mind. I'll come back to that solipsism point uh, very soon, but quickly, Bernardo, can you just explain? So why then do we have the perceptions appear as they do? Why, aren't, why do they not more accurately reflect reality? And just a quick NB, I have uh, watched your you talk about this and I still haven't quite got my head around it. So, so yes, if you could uh, explain, please. Perceptions <clears throat> may be fairly accurate in the same sense that a dial in the dashboard of instruments of an airplane uh, provides accurate information about what's going on outside, information that you can react to and fly safely by instruments. But that, of course, doesn't mean that the world outside looks like a dashboard. And, and that's the key difference. The world outside may not be, and I'm highly convinced it's not because there's plenty of evidence for it, uh, the world outside may not be 
material in the way we think of it, discrete objects in a space-time scaffolding, that's the paradigm of the dashboard. It's accurate in the sense that it allows us to survive, allows us to react timely to environmental challenges by presenting uh, what's relevant <clears throat> about the world at a glance to us on the screen of perception. Uh, it helps us avoid um, uh, unlimited increases of entropy in our internal states. Now, this is complicated. It only means the following. If we saw the world as it actually is, in other words, if our perception mirrors the world as it actually is, then our internal states would be as unbound as the states of the world, uh, which we have no control of. And that means that uh, seeing alone could kill you. It could increase your, uh, the dispersion of your internal states to the point that you would melt into hot soup. And that's thermodynamics for you. So it has been shown mathematically already by a person from the UK um, that perception cannot mirror the world. We would die very quickly if it did that. Perception is an encoded at a glance overview of what is salient and relevant about the world, but it may look like nothing. It may, may look nothing like the world actually is, although it conveys accurate information about the world. So that's the critical difference. The information is accurate, but it's presented in a way that is not the same as the world is in and of itself. It could not be the same. 